This is Kelvin, lovely, quiet guy. lives in Singapore, has a wife and a baby. Kelvin used to be a programmer making six thousand five hundred Singapore dollars per month, but then he lost his job. Within just twelve months, as of twenty twenty one, Kelvin built multiple different income streams, totaling more than twenty thousand Singapore dollars per month, more than enough for him and his wife to ditch the nine to five permanently and still live in comfort. I have followed Kelvin's YouTube videos myself for over a year. I find his story really inspiring, a strong testament as to how. Anyone can be brave and take control and shape their financial situation with decisive, realistic, and consistent action. Hey guys, Jean here. I'm that ex-lawyer from Singapore who quit to go teach surf and yoga and travel and other stuff. Now, years later, I live in Bali off passive income. Apparently, quite many of you would also love to be liberated from your nine to five, but there's a lot of fear and skepticism. People say that my life is a fluke, that I only managed to do it all because I come from a rich family and my parents paid for everything, or because I married a rich guy, <laughs> or because I don't have a kid. On and on and on. There are so many reasons as to why it can't happen for anyone else as it has for me. But this is why today I'd like you all to meet and get to know Kelvin. Hi. Kelvin, how old are you? Uh, I'm around 35 now. What exactly are your current income sources? How many different streams, and how did you create them? I had about probably seven. So I think the story starts all the way from 2020. Uh, that year, I started YouTube, so I had YouTube income. YouTube income is all the basic stuff like the affiliate income, sponsorships, affiliates. Uh, I also had my day job, but I lost my day job last year. And it turns out it was a good thing because I managed to turn over to YouTube for my day job. So now I'm an unemployed YouTuber now. <laughs> <laughs> also at the same time last year, I learned how to sell options. It's basically generating me about three to six k a month. You also have a stocks portfolio, right? Yeah. So that stocks portfolio is a long term. I don't really care uh, what it does in the short term. Long term yeah. as in maybe ten, twenty years. That's the same for me as well. Right. <laughs> Stocks wise, we are long term people. Yeah. Crypto as well. Crypto, long term, everything is long term, uh, and all the other smaller income sources like high interest savings account. I started following you actually because I was following your advice on some crypto and some shares that we have in common in our portfolio, like Tesla. Oh, Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was always under the impression that you actually um, you're very knowledgeable about stocks and. Crypto certainly. I like your explanations of why you have invested the way you have invested. Out of all the different things that you do for money, if you were to rank them in terms of difficulty, what would be the easiest and what would be the hardest? I think yeah, the high interest savings account would be the easiest. Just go do it. Claim your free money. <laughs> <laughs> then second in line would definitely be my day job, not my YouTube, my day job before I lost my job. Uh, because yeah, you have been training all your life for your day job. <laughs> that would be the easiest. Then the hardest would definitely be YouTube, because right, like for me, my YouTube right at the start, the eight, the first eight months wasn't earning anything. I was basically working like a slave for YouTube, and they weren't giving me anything in return. So only after the eight months, I start seeing like one, two dollar a day. <laughs> so that would be the hardest, and to keep doing it would be the hardest. But um. I would say it's in between because because the knowledge to learn about options is not that easy. For me, it took me like one month to even understand what is options. But once you pass that learning curve, right, uh, it becomes very easy. Like it's like doing uh, an autonom automatic task. So, yeah. 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 So it becomes automatic, like, like oh, this today I will sell at this price, uh, and that's it. <laughs> I actually feel that for most investors, start with something simple, like maybe using a robot advisor, mm, uh, yeah. or maybe index funds. Just invest in uh, the top companies that you know, like Google. Everyone knows Google, right? Yeah. If, like Kelvin and me, you two believe in investing in U.S. stocks as a strategy to financial independence, one of the easiest ways to do that will be with today's video sponsor, Moomoo. For a limited time, if you just open an account with Moomoo in Singapore, they'll give you cash coupons of forty Sing dollars straight up. Other benefits plus lifetime commission-free trading for U.S. stocks. That's huge savings if you trade frequently. Singapore brokerages commonly charge a twenty-five Sing dollars minimum commission fee, right? 
If you then make a first deposit of $2,700 Sing dollars or more, they'll give you one free share of Tesla, Apple, Facebook or new on a spin the wheel lucky draw basis. I got a free Apple share myself. That's a free stock worth about $200 Sing dollars, so I was definitely happy about that. Moomoo is an online trading platform offering easy, fast access to US, Hong Kong and Singapore stock markets and best of all, really cheap commission fees or for US stocks, zero commission fees forever, which is amazing. You can trade off your computer or your phone, but I actually find the mobile app particularly easy and intuitive, especially how fast and responsive it is when it comes to checking price charts and using the analytical tools. Customer service is exceptional. There's actually a hotline available 24 hours on trading days. Plus, they actually called me to check how I was getting on with the app a few hours after I started. I've never experienced that before from another brokerage. Friends in the US can sign up to Moomoo US and get up to 10 free stocks now. Just click on the Moomoo US and Moomoo Singapore links down below. I noticed that even though you are making like quite a lot of money by average Singaporean standards, over 20k a month, right? Um, but you're still living a really simple lifestyle. I noticed, like, a, like I, I, I noticed that Kelvin took like the bus and the MRT here to meet me <laughs> this morning, and uh, I know from watching Kelvin's videos, like he cycles around his neighborhood with his little baby and everything. So I, I, I myself, I love simple living, but I'm interested in the reasons why you still live this way. So, <laughs> so people think that to to get rich, to be wealthy, you need a ton of money. But the fact is, if you do your calculations correctly, you'll find that it's only about 600 to 700k. For most people, lah. for me, I know that it's around 600k. Uh, and that is including my kids. Uh, if, that magic, if that number sounds magical, it actually is. <laughs> it's just the magic of investing, lah, I would say. It's because of something called the 4% rule. So imagine that your investment is like a tree that's growing. So as long as your tree is growing faster than the amount that you are spending, you basically have an infinite amount of money to use. Uh, and that is around 600k. Lah. So, so if we have a pot of $600,000 cash invested right. at 4% return, right. essentially we can roll on eternally <laughs> right. at your personal family costs and spending level. Yeah, so my spending is about $2,000. Even with a kid, and a month, a month, yeah. If I can keep living on this kind of lifestyle, uh, that six hundred k is more is more than enough for me to live. As long as nothing bad happens to the investment, <laughs> <laughs> no black swan events. <laughs> so, so even though I'm earning so much money, I'm trading that money as though it doesn't exist. That what ten thousand dollars? People did say people say that is a lot. But what are you doing with so much money? Do you need a condo? Do you need a car? Will that make you happy? Maybe. But how long is that going to make you happy for? There's, uh, I think there's this thing called hedonic treadmill, where you buy this stuff, you feel happy, you feel shocked for a while. Then there's stuff, uh, the assignment wears off. I think I'm sure most of you guys have already experienced that. Uh, you buy a new iPhone. Hey, then next day you, you want another new iPhone. Why? Because you are not satisfied with it already. To be happy, right? To be rich, right? You need to have enough. You, you need to know that what you have right now is more than enough for you to live happily. And that's why she went to Bali. <laughs> Singapore is a very expensive city to live in, in general. I'm lucky, I, you know, <laughs> I let go of this place. <laughs> and I went across to like Indonesia where generally things are a lot more affordable. But you still live and, you know, thrive in this environment. Do you have any tips for living in expensive cities and coping with the cost of living here? Actually, Singapore is not that expensive to live in. Uh, if you don't spend crazily, <laughs> you don't go and grab every day, uh, order out, order grab food, you can live a modest lifestyle and still be happy, I would say. Doing what you did, going from like a day job with like around 6.5k monthly income plus a little bit extra, to what you do now with an accumulative over 20 plus K a month. Right. Is there a formula that most people can follow? Right. The formula actually is super simple. La. It's just hard work. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way around it. Just hard work. I know that Kelvin works really, really hard. He's mentioned before that he works like 70 hours a week. Yeah. I did sacrifice my health. I was sleeping like four to five hours for the entire year. Uh, and I was falling sick. La. So, but my YouTube did pick up, <laughs> so that's the result that I get. The secret to growing wealth is actually yourself, yourself. 
um, because if you look at the rate of return that you are earning money, it's way higher than all the investment that you will ever invest in. Invest in yourself first. Investment, I would say, is a sec- secondary stuff. I, I wouldn't say investment is a get rich quick scheme, but rather it's your secondary money making machine. Yeah. Uh, so aim for probably something low, like uh, in that funds that can give you like ten percent over the. But very time. safe, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. While you are growing yourself, keep throwing money into the investments. The thing about losing day job is that uh, even if you don't have any day job, you have, you still have your skill that you have. Mm. You still have your experience that you gain along the way, and <clears throat> the methodology that I'm using the research in YouTube comes from my day job. Learning how to research stuff came from my day job. So everything is transferable. Once you lo- know that skill, even if you lose your day job, you can be applying that elsewhere. Invest in yourself, right? right? <laughs> you are the best product you bring to the world out oh, there. How much does one need to be financially independent? To me, financial independence means that I have to have about $1 million. Right now, I'm nowhere near that. Is it easy to reach financial independence in a place like Singapore? I think I would say that Singapore is a place to work. If you want, if you want a place to probably look for more money, a lot of money, Singapore is one of those places that lets you because it rewards uh, hard work. I would say Singapore, and because of the environment, you are motivated to work hard. Mm. And that's that's why you see a lot of rich people in Singapore. And when I go back to my, to my hometown, right, a lot of my peers they are living a very <laughs> I would say a below average lifestyle compared to Singapore. Uh, they are a normal factory worker, they are fishermen. And I think that's okay if they, they are not looking for a lot of money, if they just want to live an easy life. So it depends, like, do you want a simple life or do you want a lot of money? I think there's no right or wrong answers. It depends on it's your... It's all very individual. Right. It's your personal choice based on your personal values. What's your personal roadmap to early retirement? I plan to like uh, work very hard in these 10, 20 years, like compress all 40 years because we are, we'll be working from 20 to around 60. So I'll be compress- compressing all 40 years of work in just 10, 20 years and be done with it <laughs> and straight, straight away just win the game, uh, complete that part of my life and just move on to the relaxing part. Any last words of inspiration? There are a lot of paths that lead to success. La. It's not just work, YouTube. Uh, Tesla. <laughs> uh, and I think it's your job to find out what makes you happy. What's the definition of success to you? Mm. So probably if you like baking, then like go go chase that kind of dream it is for you. Uh, but with that being said, right, you don't really have to know what exactly is your path to success right now, because like I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to eat for lunch later. <laughs> so much less talking about success and your life or whatever. But the more important thing is to be happy throughout this whole journey because I think it will be a long journey, yet a short journey. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it will, it will be a pity if one day you are on your deathbed looking back and you say, Ay, yeah, I could have done better. <laughs> I, I could have been more happier. So don't let that be your regret. Uh, just do whatever that makes you happy now. Keep going. Then one day, if you reach a, a roadblock that doesn't make you, uh, that makes you unhappy, then I mean just change path, uh, change your change your goal, and keep continue on your merry way. Um, I think it, because in the end, right, like Steve Jobs says, right, things only make sense when you look backwards. And yeah, you can't really see your future now. But if you look backwards in the future, you will see that how it all plays out. Then you understand that uh, it's your life, though. <laughs> Actually, I feel like Kelvin and I have had very different financial journeys. In fact, like when I sit next to him, listening to him now, <laughs> I feel a little bit inferior and like a little bit like unambitious. <laughs> but I think everyone is very different. Um, you have to live your own individual truth and money is important, right? We all agree on that. Without money, like, you know, your baseline living and most of your dreams will not be happening. Mm. So money is important, but you kind of have to still be happy while you're generating it, yeah? Right. Like Kelvin's found his way, I found my way. Uh, I hope you guys find yours too. <laughs> do check out uh, Kelvin's channel. I'll link it down below. It's Kelvin Learns Investing. I think that together, Kelvin's story and my story really goes to show that intentional action compounded over time 
can be the difference between you working a 9 to 5 that you don't particularly find meaningful until you're 65, or reaching a state of financial independence earlier that may allow you to pursue other things in life and live your best life on your own terms. Life is short, live it well and live your own truth. If a 9 to 5 is what works for you, I couldn't be happier and more supportive for you. But if it's not what you truly want for your life and the only thing holding you in place is perhaps fear, you know, fear of failure, fear of ridicule, fear of change, then I hope that what Kelvin and I have been sharing with you can help. Because honestly, doing what we both did, it was hard. But what is much harder would have been to continue forcing myself to live a life every day for the rest of my life that I did not believe in. I think that life is for us to shape with conscious action and that we can all live life well within whichever context we may find ourselves in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Consider subscribing for more similar content. And I guess I'll speak with you again next Saturday. 